Welcome biologists and in this session we're going to have a look at how DNA sequencing techniques is used for various different other areas of biology. So gene, DNA sequencing and gene sequencing, we've had a look previously in the last video at the Sanger or chain terminator technique which you do need to know in detail. However, science has progressed quite a lot since then and we now use high throughput sequencing and next generation sequencing of which you do need to know and they're on the mark scheme. Now you don't need to know what they are in detail, you just need to know the names of these new and more thorough and quicker ways to sequence DNA. Now both of these methods use uh, massive parallel sequencing which is where we use multiple sets of DNA which are sequenced together usually using computers. Bioinformatics, this is where you would develop software that's able to process and understand large complex information such as lots and lots of DNA sequences using computational biology and it allows access to a large amount of data. So bioinformatics using computational biology allows information to be stored that's universal. So that means that it's the same genetic code that's used in all countries. So for example, we all use A, T, G and C. So the information on there is universal. It can be accessed by anyone uh, independent of the language that they're using. It also allows a rapid comparison of sequences with newly sequenced alleles. So for example, if you sequence a new genome of a new bacteria or a virus or an, a newly found organism, you could compare that with known sequences that are already on the database. You can also store on there information about the amino acid sequences and protein structures. And this is really good because we can then compute a model uh, new protein structures from a base sequence. So say, for example, there was a virus, a new virus. I could then use the DNA sequence from that virus to predict what the protein structures are on that particular virus. And then you could use that for epidemi epidemiology, which we'll look at in a second. So this kind of research is used an awful lot at the moment and it's up and coming really in the science world and there are lots of jobs available at the moment in this area. Now sequencing is allowed for things like synthetic biology and synthetic biology is where you involved in redesigning the products of organisms for useful purposes by engineering. So for example, biofabrication is one of these ways uh, and this creates uh, fibers to create things like um, coats or shoes or bags or furniture, for example. And the beauty of these products is that because they're all made from natural fibers, they biodegrade relatively easy once you finish using them. So you're not adding to the plastic consumerism. And again, there's a lot of development in this area at the moment. So that's synthetic biology. Uh, bioinformatics can also be used for epidemiology, which I mentioned before, and it's really good because it allows you to compare the DNA sequence of new bacteria, virus or fungi or whatever it is that's causing a problem or disease. And it allows you to compare their DNA sequence and structure to other known DNA sequences and structures. And as a result, you can identify source of the outbreaks, you can identify where there might be vulnerable populations that might be more susceptible to that certain disease, and therefore, you can therefore target vaccination programs to these certain individuals that might be more vulnerable because you know by looking and comparing DNA sequences what that virus or bacteria will be more likely to target within a person's genome. <clears throat> sequencing also allows for protonomics and protonomics is where you look at the study of proteins and the structure of proteins and again you can compare known sequences of DNA and proteins using the amino acid sequence to unknown so new bacterial virus genomes and predict what that protein structure and amino acid sequence would be. The reason why we do compare genomes is First of all, it's universal and we can do it across all species, but also it allows us to look at phylogeny and look at that evolutionary relationships. So the more similar those DNA sequences are, the more closely related that they would be. And it's really good to compare within and between species. So there we have it, the different gene, gene sequencing techniques and what they are used for within biology. Guys, good luck with your exams.